Empower greetings, friend. It's Dr. Della Toro. Listen, welcome to my channel. I'm so pumped and excited, delighted and honored to share some powerful content with you that I know is going to take you to the next level as a speaker, author, coach, online influencer. Listen, in this video, I wanna jump right in. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment below. Let me know what you're, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and if you're getting massive value, which I know you will. Listen, after giving 4,000 paid documented talks all over planet Earth, eight best-selling books, you know, literally worldwide television networks, you know, I, I'm 45 years young at the time of this particular broadcast. I've been doing this full-time for two decades, 20 years, and I've learned a whole lot about um, what it takes to be the best in this industry. So I wanna share with you seven deadly sins, seven massive mistakes, seven issues that I see most aspiring speakers, authors, coaches, consultants, influencers are making that's really costing them hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars as they seek to influence and go to the next level. So I know that if you're watching this, this is gonna be massively valuable. So I'm gonna jump right into the content. The first massive mistake that you could potentially be making is write this down, family, practicing during a performance. Write that down. Practicing during a performance. Well, what do you mean by that? Here's something that you got to understand. If the client calls you for an opportunity, in between the time the client calls you for the opportunity and the time you actually deliver on that opportunity, if you did not practice that presentation multiple times, when it's time for you to deliver the presentation, my friend, instead of performing, you're actually practicing. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Listen, if you're serious about monetizing your message, if you're serious about really developing your gift and talent and, and, and finding the money that's in your mouth, you cannot practice during a performance. You've got to make sure that you're practicing. There's a, there's a, there's a great quote that says this. The best don't get ready. The best stay ready so they never have to get ready. Does that make sense? So you want to be consistently practicing your speaking, consistently practicing your gift, talent, and ability and skill, consistently practicing your craft so you can master your craft so that when the client calls, you can deliver a masterful presentation. I do this example all over planet Earth. I say, do me a favor, reach as high as you can. I do that for audiences all over the world, right? And people reach up, and normally they reach like 20%. And I say, reach higher than that, then they reach 40%. Then I say, reach higher than that, and they reach 80%, right? What's the point? I say, your first crack at anything is never your best. So here's my thought, my friend. If between the time you get the opportunity to do the gig and the time you deliver on the gig, literally, if during, in between that time, you didn't have a chance to practice, when you're performing at that gig, my friend, you're really practicing because that particular performance of your speech, your presentation, your training was not your best. And you want to give your clients your absolute best. What's gotten me repeat referral spinoff business, which is one of the things I teach you when you join our five day monetize your message challenge. What's gotten me repeat referral spinoff business all over planet Earth has been making sure that when I deliver, when it's time to perform, I'm actually performing, right? I'm not practicing. I'm actually delivering and I'm delivering high value for my clients. So you might say, well, Dr. Doctor, how should I practice? Great question. Are you in a good Toastmasters club in your area? Are you participating in a good Toastmasters club? In 2017, I was the opening keynote speaker for the Toastmasters World Convention, which is incredible. It's a remarkable opportunity. Always remember it. But guess what, y'all? I started in Toastmasters when I was in graduate school at the Florida State University. So my journey in Toastmasters goes back two decades. I remember going to Toastmasters meetings in the back room of a Western Sizzler. Now, you know I got to go back for that. <laughs> Come on, somebody, right? <laughs> but I wanted to do that so that I was not practicing during what's supposed to be a performance. Does that make sense? Second massive mistake that I see a lot of speakers make is being too you-focused in your presentation. You're too you-focused. You're focused on how you look. I want you to look great, but you're too focused on how you look. You're too focused on how you sound. You're too focused on, on, on if you like your own voice or not. You're too focused on what people are going to think about the graphics that you've chosen or, or, or this or that. You're too you focused. 
Does that make sense? And when you're too you focused, it increases your chance to be nervous. See, people ask me all the time, do I get nervous before a presentation? I don't get nervous before a presentation. I get excited. I get, I get, I get, I get crunk. I get, I get, I get juiced. I get jazzed. I get, I get pumped. I get ready. Right. And the same thing that's happening inside of you. Sometimes when you get ready to give a presentation and you call it nervousness, all those same physiological things are going off in me as well. I just don't label it as nervousness. Why? Because I'm not focused on myself. I'm focused on the client. You don't know what I'm focused on? I don't write these down. I'm focused on the client's outcome. I'm focused on the audience that I'm in front of. I'm focused on who drove the furthest. I'm focused on, 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 on whose birthday it is, whose anniversary it is. I'm focused on that person that spent their last to get on a plane, train, or automobile to get to that, again, that, that event, and they need a breakthrough today. I'm focused on the person that needs some strategy or else they're, 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 they're literally moments away from slipping into a depression. I'm focused on transforming that audience, my friend. So here's one of those things. If you're really serious about going to the next level as a speaker, you got to stop being so you focused and be others focused, right? When you're you focused, you're focused on ego. But when you're client focused, you're focused on we go. Woo! <laughs> Isn't that good, y'all? Come on, somebody, right? So I really, really want you to focus on really focusing on the outcome of the client. When you focus on what they need, my friend, your nerves disappear. The third deadly sin that I see a lot of folks make, a lot of speakers make, a lot of aspiring speakers, authors, coaches, influencers, is being a one-trick pony. And what I mean by being a one-trick pony is this. I know so many folks who are, they're, 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 they're kind of like one-dimensional, right? So, and, 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 and we live in too diverse of a time for you to be one-dimensional, right? You need to use multiple modalities, Right. You got to use multiple ways to reach a very diverse world that we live in today. The world that we live in right now, there is this is the most diverse workforce we've ever had in human history. Right. So I'm certified in several things. Disc personality profile. I'm also certified in neuro linguistic programming, hypnosis. I'm certified in a lot of different stuff. Leadership development, John Maxwell, all kinds of great stuff. Right. Tony Robbins programs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. In addition to two decades of of being in the industry of instructional design and curriculum design, adult learning theory, right? So because I have all this stuff in my head, one of the things that I've learned and realized is that we're dealing with the most diverse workforce in human history. So now more than ever before, we have to be diverse in how we teach to audiences all over the world. Does that make sense? So you cannot be a one-trick pony. In other words, if you come out of the faith-based space, you cannot just use a churchy cadence and expect everybody to resonate with you. If you come out of the athletic space, you can't just always be barking at people because that's going to turn certain people off. If you come from the corporate space, you can't use too much corporate lexicon, jargon, and vernacular, or you're going to confuse regular blue car folks, right? If you come from the streets, you don't want to use so much slang that, uh, that people can't understand what the heck you're talking about. Does that make sense? So you want to be bi-dialectical. You want to be able to use multiple modalities, speak to the different personality styles, speak to the different types of learners, speak to the different backgrounds of individuals, right, that have come from different places. You can't just speak to your generation now. Now you got to be able to speak two or three generations before you and uh, uh, older than you and younger than you. So being a one-trick pony is a deadly sin, my friend. You've got to, now more than ever before, you need a tool chest of resources. If you're going to be a great speaker, author, coach, consultant, influencer online, you've got to be bi-dialectical. So we got to get rid of being a one-trick pony. Number four, I hope you're enjoying this. And if you're enjoying this, like, subscribe, share, comment below, and make sure you join us for our upcoming five-day challenge. It's called the Monetize Your Message Challenge. It's going to take you to a whole nother level. Number four, speech organization. I cannot tell you how important it is for you to understand the importance of speech organization. Write this down and remember this for the rest of your life right? This is so important. Most speakers speak for reaction. They want the standing ovation, right? They want the ooh and the ah from the audience. They want to see people taking notes. They want a reaction. And as long as they get a reaction, they're good. I don't speak for reaction. I speak for retention. Because here's what I've learned a long time ago. Watch this. If you cannot be remembered, you cannot be rebooked. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. If you cannot be remembered, you cannot be rebooked. 
Does that make sense? And rebookings happen when the client can remember your presentation. So speech organization matters, right? I know so many speakers who get up there and they give a rant. And it's, it's, it's great, it's cool, it's a great rant, but you, uh, uh, five minutes later, ten, I cannot remember what you said. And if I can't remember what you said, I'm not gonna go to your website, I'm not gonna opt in, I'm not gonna join your text platform, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna enroll in your program afterwards, why? Because there was no focus on speech, organization, and flow. Does that make sense? So if you wanna learn how to build better speech, organization, and structure, and flow, into your presentations, join us for our five day challenge. But that's a massive, massive mistake that a lot of people are making. You're speaking for the reaction. Listen, you know the reaction I want? I want my audience to clap with their wallet. <laughs> you just missed it, I'm gonna say it again. I like for my audience to clap with their wallet. And here's what that means. They come back to the back table, they get our books, programs, courses, they go online, they enroll in our ver various programs. That's the reaction, quote, that I want. In order to get that reaction, I have to make sure that I teach them content in a way that the brain can retain, which means it has to be chunked down. Does that make sense? So vitally important. You wanna create a powerful content that is digestible by the brain and retained in the heart. People will forget what you say. They'll forget what you do, but Dr. Maya Angelou said it best. They'll never forget the way you make them feel. So not only do I want you to impact their minds, but I want you to leave an imprint on their heart. And I think that's powerful. Fifth deadly sin, long, drawn out, disconnected, unnecessary stories. Long, drawn out, disconnected, unnecessary stories. My friend, stop it. <laughs> let me coach you, if you don't mind, let me coach you, right? I've been doing this all over the world. I've got Fortune 50 corporations that are my clients. The best in pharmacy call me. The best corporations in aviation call us. The best organizations in entertainment reach out to us, right? The best organizations all over the planet in financial services and insurance call on Dr. Del Toro to take their employees, their leaders, their staff, their team to the next level. And if you're watching this and you'd like us to come and deliver incredible content to your organization, please reach out to us, delatoro.com. We'd love to connect with you and we'd love to bring our incredible programs to your organization. But it's vitally important that you understand, friends, the reason why our, our clients trust us to deliver at the highest level is because we don't tell long, drawn out, disconnected, unnecessary stories in our presentations. See, you think the client cares about your story and they don't. Every audience listens to the same radio station, W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? The only purpose of a story, watch this, is to make sure when you tell a story, you need to leave room in the story in order for your audience members to be able to find themselves in the story, find inspiration in the story, find strategy technique in the story, and find takeaways for them in the story. It happened to you, but you share the story to benefit them. Does that make sense? What happened happened to you, but you share the story so it can benefit your audience. Does that make sense? So get rid of the long, drawn out, disconnected, unrelated stories. In an hour keynote that I would give, nine times out of 10, if I tell three or four stories, each story will probably be under a minute each. Why? Because it's not about the story. It's about the outcome for the audience. So get rid of those long, disconnected, unnecessary stories because your audience doesn't care. They just haven't told you that yet. Does that make sense? Number six, underestimating entertainment value, baby. Woo! Underestimating and undervaluing entertainment value, right? It's so important that you understand that your audience wants to be edutained. Write that down. Your audience wants to be edutained. If you want to kick butt, if you want to take names, if you want to go to the next level, edutain your audience. Entertain them and educate them at the exact same time. If you like music, incorporate music. If you like dancing, incorporate dancing. If you like um, trivia, incorporate trivia. If you like things that you do with your kids, incorporate that. If you like the game of Uno, incorporate that. But find a way to edutain your audience. As you teach them, entertain them in some cool way that's unique to you. Don't let it be forced. If humor is not your thing, don't use humor. If jokes and anecdotes is not your thing, don't use them. My thing is metaphors. My thing is visual aids. My thing is, my thing is, 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 is I love visuals and imagery and music and multi-sensory. But that, that's taken me decades to master that stuff. Does that make sense? 
So you got to find a way to entertain. A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. So find a cooler way to entertain your audience as you teach them. And massive, massive stuff will come as a direct result for that. Right. And then number seven, I've, I've heard literally tens of thousands of speakers all over the world, if not more. Right. And one of the things that's always interesting to me is how many speakers get up, give a great talk and don't leave the audience with a clear CTA, a call to action. Here's my question, my friend. What is the next best logical step that you want the person in the audience to do once they're done hearing your presentation? What is the CTA? What is the clear CTA? Right. And if, and if you want help, listen, because I, I firmly believe that when you give a presentation, the goal of that presentation should be to continue the learning for the audience. So what's next for them? OK, they heard you talk for an hour. What's next? Is it a book? Is it a course? Is it a program? Right. I created an entire online course called Crush Your Sales designed to teach you persuasive presentation skills for sales professionals and entrepreneurs and speakers, right? So you can go to crushthesale.com, that's crushthesale.com to learn all about that online course. But at the end of the day, one of the things that we teach you in that course is the importance of a CTA, a clear call to action. What is the next best logical step that you want an audience member to take as a direct result of experiencing your presentation? That's what we're looking for in your presentation, especially at the close, making sure that you leave your audience with a clear CTA. How do they know what's next? How do they know how to take it to the next level? So I promised you at the beginning of this video, I was going to teach you seven deadly sins, seven massive mistakes that most speakers make that prevent them from going to the next level. And we go into way more detail about these and so many other aspects about speaking. When you join our upcoming five day challenge, it's called monetize your message. You can go to www.monetizeyourmessagechallenge.com monetize your message challenge.com and register at the VIP level right away for this transformational five day experience where you're going to learn and be mentored and coached directly by me. It's going to be absolutely incredible. So we've taught you today how to avoid practicing during a performance, right? Getting away from being you focused. In other words, make it about the audience, right? Getting away from being a one trick pony. We're going to focus instead of having different tools and different modalities. We talked about getting rid of just like speaking just off of, of a rant with no structure and really speaking for retention so we can get rebooked. We talked about getting rid of those long, undisconnected stories. We talked about over teaching and not having entertainment value to make it fun. Right. And then number seven, we talked about making sure that you have a clear CTA. So I delivered on my promise. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let us know. Hit that notifications button so you'll always be notified when we drop a brand new video to take you to the next level. Make sure you like and subscribe. Share this broadcast. Comment below. Let me know what this content means to you. And we cannot wait to see you at the Monetize Your Message five day challenge or somewhere around the planet because know that I'm somewhere believing in you. This is Dr. Del Troll pushing you, challenging you, stretching you to continue to aspire higher and most importantly, shift everything you got going on into a higher gear. Talk to you soon.